Melanie Ray here and today I am doing a hair care tutorial. This was a viewer request who asked that I share how I take care of my hair. So I've got some little tips and tricks for you today. First of all, a good hair brush. I cannot emphasize this enough. This one is a basic paddle brush which means it's basically all purpose. I use it to put my hair up with, um, it helps me with styling, and it's just your general go-to. It's wonderful. Then what you're going to need is a really good wide tooth comb. And the reason I say this is because when you are detangling your hair, you don't want to be using the brush for that because it might snag in any knots. This will help you to work through your knots really safely without causing breakage to your hair. And I also use Palmolive Fashion Girl Detangling Spray. And I always do this without fail. And it actually creates my first protective layer in case there is any possible breakage about to happen. And it's my first defense against flyaways as well. Now, when you are detangling your hair, don't start at the top and drag down. Always start at the ends and work your way up the hair shaft. That way you aren't going to have a massive knot right here. Next, keep your hair in a protective style 90% of the time. Now, your two most common protective hairstyles are a bun and a braid. These are protective because they protect the hair shaft, the, it's, the hair's kept out of the way, and also because it prevents tangles. And so you'll spend less time trying to detangle your hair with possible breakage. I use a velvet scrunchie for my buns. I find that it's very gentle on my hair. It doesn't um, rub on it or feel too harsh. Next. Choose a shampoo and conditioner that is for your hair type. Everyone's hair type is different. Now, because I'm trying to have long hair that's strong, I have sun silk longer and stronger. Now, you want to have a shampoo and conditioner that were meant to work together. Um, because when they were formulated, they were made to complement each other. Another hint, is to change up which brand of shampoo you use every now and then so that your hair doesn't become like immune to what you're using. Now, speaking of shampoo, do not shampoo your hair every day. Try to do it every other day or every third day even, depending on what type of hair you have. What I do on my in-between days is I use Batiste Dry Shampoo this is really good because all I have to do is spray it on my roots, one, two, three, and then behind four, and massage it in, and I'm good to go for the day. And it means I'm not stripping those natural oils out of the ends of my hair. Batiste is definitely my favorite brand of dry shampoo. I tried Swatscoff and it made my hair smell like Fruit Loops, and I just wasn't okay with that. Now, the type of hair ties you use is very important as well. See these? No metal joins. It's very important because metal joins can snag on your hair and break your hair. Also, tie your hair up in a braid to go to sleep at night. And I find that these little fluffy ones are great for that because they don't rub on your neck while you're going to sleep. Now, bobby pins. First of all, most people put the bobby pin in the hair the wrong way around. They do it like this with the long part at the bottom. That's actually incorrect. You need to do it with the short part at the bottom so that the ribbing on the short part actually grips against your scalp and that will help hold the hair better. And you see these two little nibs here? As soon as either one of those disappears, toss the bobby pin out. It will scrape your hair and possibly cause damage to your hair shaft. Also, if you're doing smaller braids, I recommend using these little plastic hair ties. 
they stop your hair from feeling weighed down. And so I've actually got two little of these ones on the end of my braid today. And it means that your hair doesn't feel really weighty and it even complements when you're using a hair accessory. Next, flyaways. As I said, your detangling spray should be your first go-to for flyaways, but sometimes we just need a little bit more than that. So we've got a couple of options when it comes to this. I've got a Frizzies serum. I put just a couple of drops of that in my hand, rub it together in my fingers, and then press it onto my hair. Or I've got an anti-frizz perfecting lotion. And this is very moisturizing as well. So if your hair's a little bit dry, dryness causes frizz, then this is what you should want to be using. If you've got curls, like I have some natural curls in my hair, you'll want a curl perfecting spray and a curl defining spray. Now, drying your hair as much as you can, let your hair dry naturally. It's best for the hair. You want to avoid heat on your hair as much as possible. This includes blow dryers, straighteners and curlers. So if you are going to use those things, make sure to always apply a heat protectant spray first. Now, towel drying your hair is actually not ideal either because if you rub, you can actually damage your ends of your hair and your hair shaft. So what I've taken to using is a little microfiber towel and I simply wrap this over my hair and I keep it in while, uh, on top of my hair while I'm getting dressed and my hair is just about dry in 10 minutes because this absorbs all the moisture. Whatever moisture is left is actually going to be okay. It's not going to drip all over you. And that prevents you from having to rub. Next, when you really want to nourish your hair, you've got a couple of options. I choose to use coconut hair oil from the body shop and some basic home essentials almond oil. Both of these are really good for your hair. Uh, the coconut oil is very nourishing while the almond oil is very strengthening because it contains vitamin E, proteins and zinc. Also, what you put into your body is very important to taking care of your hair. Make sure that you're drinking a lot of water to hydrate your hair from the inside out, as well as eating healthy fats, such as um, avocados, nuts, and uh, good proteins like eggs and chicken. And finally, cutting. Now I get my hair cut about once every four months, about three times a year. And that's because my hair is really long now. And the cuts just help to basically get rid of the split ends so the hair can keep growing healthily and it stays nice and shiny. If your hair is shorter, however, you'll want to get it cut more often, probably every 10 to 12 weeks, to help your style maintain its shape. Now, always get a trained professional to cut your hair. There's a reason they were trained to do this, they know what they're doing. They know how to thin your hair when it needs to be thin. They know how to cut properly along your hair shaft so as not to cause damage. They know how to make it straight. Um, all these things are really important and they'll be able to give you good advice on whether bangs or no bangs, aka fringe, is good for you. Uh, they'll be able to help you with advice for hair colouring. And they're really your expert to talk to about what's going to be best for you. So they'll be able to tell you if your hair needs more moisture or volume. They're going to be a real asset to you. So yes, I do have coloured hair. However, I only colour it probably at the same time I get my hair cut every four months or so. 
I don't want to over color it because that can be very drying as well for the hair. Because as you can see, I have got a little bit of a white patch here because I have what's called pigmentation deficiency. And so I've had this for basically as long as I can remember. But it doesn't bother me now, it's just become a part of who I am. When I want to cover it up for special occasions, like my birthday and that kind of thing, I can get it coloured then, or I can even use hair chalk. And this washes out in the shower, but it just gives me enough coverage to get me through the day if I don't want to have to bother going and getting it coloured. So I hope this all helps you. Have a great week. Bye!